it sprung out of the summer of 2020 um, when obviously all of us in this profession were getting a lot of pressure and we're doing a lot of soul searching. Uh, and I, I really did buy into the idea. I was discussing it with our mayor, who was a good friend of mine. And um, he had heard about one of the larger jurisdictions out west doing a community advisory board. And he thought it might um, you know, be a good idea, just like a two-way street, basically. Like I would get something out of it. Uh, and also, obviously, the people that participated might get something out of it. Uh, we've got a real um, issue in Virginia. If you start off with the fact that we call my office the Commonwealth's attorney, a lot of people don't even know what that is, right? They don't even know what the Commonwealth's attorney does. And it's only when you tell them, um, you know, you're a state's attorney or a district attorney that they have some vague idea of what you do, right? So, um, and our, our, our city is kind of interesting. Um, in Virginia, we're not affiliated with any county. So for all intents and purposes, we are a geographically small but heavily densely populated county. Uh, and then my office is responsible for everything from homicide down to drunk driving and everything. And um, so it's, it's important for people to, you know, obviously know who the prosecutor is and have access to the prosecutors. So I agreed and we did a couple of things that year, but, but this was probably one of the biggest things. Um, there is no statutory provision for a community advisory board in the code. Uh, there's no ordinance or anything like that. Uh, I just decided to do it. And so there's really no guidance whatsoever as to how to do this uh, in Virginia. Uh, so I was in some ways at liberty to put it together the way I wanted to put it together. So um, it's probably a good um, uh, you know, contrast to the larger jurisdictions uh, and what I use my board for is different, but let's start with how I put it together. Um, came up with the idea, wrote some very loose uh, guidelines or bylaws, if you want to call them that. Um, and then we advertised for people to apply and um, to take care of all of the issues that you would want to take care of when trying to come up with the, um, the membership of a community advisory board. Uh, I asked people to put in, um, uh, when they applied to give me their name, uh, a description of what they did for a living, um, a, either an address or a neighborhood, so I could kind of figure out where people lived in the city and try to make the group geographically diverse. And then I actually had them write a very small, very short essay, if you will, paragraph or two about why they wanted to participate. Um, and I actually got really good uh, participation with that. I got um, very interesting responses. Um, and I think I got, you know, I was trying to fill 10 positions. And I think I got something like 50 people that applied. Um, and I went through every single one of them. Uh, there were a couple of like, um, you know, snarky, like sarcastic entries, so I could eliminate those. There were a couple of people that did not live in the city. I'm not sure what they were interested in, but I could eliminate those because one of the criteria was that you had to be a city resident. Uh, and I got down to maybe about 30 people who kind of passed the criteria. Um, and then I personally uh, did phone interviews with all of them. And I, in the end, selected who I wanted to select, but I tried very, very hard uh, to select people that I didn't know personally because I, I grew up in this area. And so I know a lot of people in the city. Uh, I also try to get it geographically diverse. Um, the phone interviews and the, uh, the, the, for lack of a better term, the essay on the application allowed me to kind of get people's viewpoints. So I did select some people that were definitely uh, more uh, against law enforcement, if you will, as opposed to being a proponent for law enforcement. And by putting some time and some effort into this, I was able to get, I think, a very good board that had a diverse set of viewpoints and kind of represented the different areas of um, my city. And since then, we're in our, we're going into our fifth year in August, we'll have the fifth iteration of the board. I've used um, some of the people that applied originally, uh, but, but were not selected. I kind of wanted to remain on a, on a list, if you will, and I put some of them on the board. Uh, one time we ran into a situation where uh, a woman, uh, a, a person of color was um, uh, the victim of a crime and she had um, 
basically she's a single mom and a guy broke into her house in the middle of the night he apparently was not actually trying to burglarize it he was intoxicated and apparently thought it was his own apartment uh, but as you might imagine uh, that was very scary uh, for her because she's there in the middle of the night with her, with her son and it turned out that the uh, the defendant in that case was white and my office one of my younger people gave a very lenient uh, plea offer to him and this woman was very unhappy and perceived racial bias in that decision and while I respectfully disagree with that I do agree that my office did a poor job of explaining it to her and giving her um, the time and attention that she deserved um, and so anyway she asked to speak to me about this we got to speaking about the case and from there she wanted to learn more about me and my uh, viewpoints and pretty soon, even though she still wasn't happy with the outcome, she had a much better understanding. And she asked me if there was any way that she could get involved, um, you know, in the community because she had just moved here, uh, or maybe to help my office in some way uh, to understand the viewpoints of people that probably are from different backgrounds. And so I put her on the board. And she has um, proven to be an ally in some circumstances, but also has not been afraid uh, to push back on law enforcement or even my office where she sees it to be appropriate. So I definitely think it's important to try to get a lot of varied uh, backgrounds. Um, on the other hand, I have a former police chief here uh, who unfortunately about 15 years ago um, uh, had to leave under difficult circumstances because he actually uh, was charged with a drunk driving offense while he was in office. Uh, but he's a great guy and, um, you know, he's got a very different viewpoint on stuff. So uh, I try to get people that are um, invested in the, in the board, interested in what we're doing, want to actually participate. There's at least three people that have remained on for four years now. They, they wanted to keep doing this every year. I ask them if they want to re-up uh, and they have said yes. As to what we're doing, um, it's, uh, it's really, we meet quarterly on, on a normal schedule basis, we meet quarterly. We've had one or two, for lack of a better term, emergency meetings when something came up like a police involved shooting here in the city. Um, we meet normally via Teams. Uh, I have tried a couple of times to have in-person meetings and to be quite honest, the um, we're doing this in the evening on, the week, in the, on a weeknight and the attendance is low. Uh, I get much better attendance and participation if I do it online. So what I've been doing now is having um, three meetings a year online and one in the fall in person at my office. Uh, I put together an agenda. Um, it really depends on what's happening. Uh, we don't talk about cases so much, um, at least not cases that are, are, are pending investigation or uh, pending prosecution in the courts. Uh, it's more of a policy sounding board for me. Um, a lot of what I do is I'm very active with our state association here in Virginia. Uh, I'm the incoming president. Um, I'm very, therefore I'm very active with the General Assembly. Um, and we do a very, very good job, I think as an association of, of weighing in on bills and lobbying for and against bills that we either oppose or support. And a lot of times I will go through proposed bills um, with the community advisory board and get real citizens input. Um, A, to help instruct and inform how I see these um, issues, uh, but also because I think it kind of is more um, impactful for the delegates and the senators at the state level that I'm talking to, uh, when I can say, hey, you know, my community advisory board and I met and discussed this, and here are the concerns that the citizens are telling me about. And so I'll give you a great example of what I mean. Uh, in Virginia, we legalized marijuana a couple of years ago. Um, I have my community advisory board. We talked through uh, how they felt about that when that was being debated. Um, everyone, including two former law enforcement officers, agreed that, you know, adults smoking marijuana in their own homes, really, that should be their own, that should be, a, you know, a, a person's right, basically. Why, why would the police be involved in that? But also, all of those people, uh, including one or two people who are kind of suspicious of law enforcement, agreed with three areas that they were concerned about. And they were kids having access to marijuana, people driving high, and uh, people walking around the streets uh, smoking marijuana when they're out, like with their families and stuff, trying to have dinner. Uh, and so I was able Five to. Five minute warning. 
uh, I'm sorry, I was able to take that back to the um, to the uh, to to the delegates and the senators and explain uh, that this was some input from um, not just me, but from the citizenry. 